All right, everybody, in this video, what we're going to do is, is go through the derivation of Chomsky's normal form, or, or taking a grammar and pushing it in a Chomsky normal form format. Um, one of the advantages of Chomsky normal form is that any, any string derived by the grammar will be derived in two times the length of that string minus one steps. And that's because every rule either generates an extra variable or it turns a variable into a terminal. And so every rule has to be variable goes to two variables or variable goes to terminal. And the only rule that's allowed to go to the empty string is the start statement. And so we're going to go through a series of processes of, of, in this particular grammar, of getting rid of rules that have too many things, um, that have epsilons in the wrong places, that don't have enough things, and, and generate a new grammar that, that is the same language, but um, that does so in the Chomsky normal form sort of way. Okay? All right. So it's going to involve a lot of, of kind of copy-pasting the grammars that we have. Um, and replacing them with the things that we need. So this grammar generates a cool language. Uh, I won't give away what it is, um, but it's kind of neat. It is an inherently ambiguous language, um, which means that no matter what grammar you write for it, um, that grammar will indeed be ambiguous. So there will be some string in that grammar that is derived in two different ways. So usually the number one step in Chomsky is to generate a new grammar that is the same but that has a new start state. It turns out that that's not absolutely necessary in this particular grammar, but rather than kind of state the rules for when that's necessary, what we're going to do um, is just always do it. Um, if no state ever has S on the right-hand side, then, then this is okay. Um, you don't actually have to generate it, but we're, we're going to do it just kind of to, to get into the practice of always doing it um, and live life like that. The second step in Chomsky is to get rid of these, these pesky, let, let's pick a color here, these pesky epsilons, you see these? These are bad. And the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna simulate the fact as if every time we see the terminal that would have generated the epsilon, we'll, we'll pretend that that variable's not there. So like T goes to epsilon here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rewrite S0 goes to TCU as S0 goes to, let's pretend T's not there because T goes to epsilon. Maybe it just goes to C. Um, we also notice that C goes to epsilon, so we can pretend that C is not there, so maybe it just goes to T. Or perhaps neither of them um, are there because both of them go to epsilon, so then S0 just goes to epsilon itself. S is not different, um, and you'll see that we're going to duplicate everything that we end up doing with S0 to S because they're not really different. We come down here to T, T goes to ATB, and then we'll pretend as if T is not there as if we took the T goes to epsilon step. Down here we have C goes to C, capital C, and we'll pretend that that C is not there, so maybe C can just generate a C by itself. We have U goes to AUC. Um, U does not go to epsilon here, um, and neither does, well, wait, B does. So when we do this, what you'll find is that we have to add a pretend like B is not there, which we'd have to add a U goes to epsilon state here. And that then is going to cascade and force us to remove that epsilon as well. So B goes to little b, big B. We pretend that epsilon's not there. Um, and so we could just go to little b here. So, so now what we've seen is that we have a new rule where you could go to epsilon. Um, rather than kind of fix this everywhere, um, instead what I'm going to do is just fix it in place here because it only affects one particular state, and that's this one right here because um, U only shows up right here. So if we pretend like U is not there, we could just have AC. Going back through this list, we have one more state. S goes to epsilon, but S never shows up anywhere, so we don't have to pretend like that doesn't exist. And we end up with this thing. We have S goes to TC or U or C or T or the empty string. We have S goes to the same thing, except we negate the empty string. The T goes to ATB or AB. C goes to CC. That's not supposed to be an arrow. That's supposed to be an OR or C. We have U goes to AUC or B or AC. B goes to BB or B. So we've gotten rid of all the epsilons, um, and that's where we need to go. The next step is to get rid of unit rules. Unit rules are any time that you have a variable that goes to a single other variable. So there are multiple places where this happens. Um, I'll try to highlight some of them in a different color. They look like this. What? That doesn't seem like it's highlighting. Oh, maybe you guys can see it on your screen. But there are a few places where we have a variable that goes to one variable. When you do that, what you do is you take the variable on the right-hand side, like for example, for this U case, and I'm gonna take all of the U 
and I'm going to insert it directly where it is up there in S0. So I'm going to copy this thing here. And uh, did, did that not copy? Hello, let me copy. I think I'm going off the edge of the screen right now, so that's being fussy. I'm going to copy and paste it here. Um, let's erase some highlights. And we are going to replace all of these rules. OK, so first up, S0 goes to U. So I'm going to erase this U. And I'm going to add all the rules where U exists there, just, just in place here. We have S0 goes to C. I'll add all the things for C, just, just in place. Um, we have S0 goes to T. I'm going to erase T here. T's by itself. I'll just replace all these rules here. Uh, we have S0 goes to B now. That got added by something else. So I'm just going to add them here. You see that S gets all these new rules. Um, this is a little C. I want to, I want to make sure that, that looks small. Um, S is not different. Again, S is never mentioned on the right-hand side. Um, I'm, I'm going to erase it for now because it doesn't ever show up again. We have one more unit rule down here in U goes to B, which you already saw us replace up there in the S goes to U, and then that created the S goes to B. Um, and this is what we should look at, look like right now. Seems right to me. Okay, unit rule's gone. Now, we're getting closer to having rules in the form that we want. So like S0 goes to TC is fine. But there are a couple of places where we generate two terminals or terminals mixed with variables, and we need to get rid of those situations. And so what we do, whoops, there needs to be an or there. What we do is we generate new variables that go to the terminals. Um, and you know what? I'll do that in place here. So for example, I'll generate a UA, which goes to A. I'll generate a UB, which goes to B. And I'll generate a, you know what, let's not use U because U is already part of our language. Let's use B. And a B, C, which goes to C. And then anywhere where it's mixed in here with other variables, I'm going to replace those. So like we have A, U, C here. I'm going to replace that with B, A, and B, C. We've got A, C here. That counts um, because it's more than one terminal. So I'll write B, A, B, C. We have C, C here, so I'm going to write B, C. Now here's a catch. This C is actually a valid um, Chomsky normal form rule because it's just S0 goes to C, so I'm going to leave that. Um, we've got A and B here, so I'm going to replace those. We've got A, B here, so I'm going to replace those. We've got just B here, big B, little b, big B, so I'm going to replace that. What happened here? Try that again. Then we have little b, which is in Chomsky normal form already. So I'm going to do that everywhere in my grammar. So everywhere I see A's and B's, I'm replacing them with these new variables, um, as long as they make sense. Everywhere I see a C, I replace it with this new variable, only for the places where it is not already in Chomsky normal form, which is a variable goes to a single variable. All right, so that was pretty fast. I want to kind of check in and make sure um, that this looks the way that I think it's supposed to look. Uh, da -da. It's a little hard to verify, but, but I think we have it right. So it's A-U-C in the original grammar, right? Right. It's a B here. All right. It, I feel like it needs a little bit of reorganization, but this seems okay. Now, the only other rules that are in violation are rules that are a terminal, a variable goes to three variables. So you can see that in a couple of different places, not many, um, but it does show up um, in a couple of different places where you have a variable goes to a few other variables. So what we're gonna do is invent yet again more rules. I'll call this W A T, and I'll invent a rule W A U. And W A T is gonna be it's gonna go to V A T like this. And then WAU is going to go to VAU like this. Um, and then anywhere where I see VAU, I'm going to write WAU. And anywhere where I see VAT, when it's with another variable, right? Anytime it has more than one variable, then I'm going to write WAT. And I'll do that across the board here. Uh, 
All right. So it's a little sloppy here, and, and it deserves a rewrite. Um, but this is now in Chomsky normal form. So from our start state, again, these are all rules that go together. Maybe, maybe I have enough room to write them all on one page now. Can we, can we see all of these on one page? It's very close. Very, very close. Um, let's see how our time is doing, how much time I can talk. We are about 10 and a half minutes. We're a little over time. But every rule goes to either two variables. You can verify that, right? All of these are two variable rules. There we go, all the red ones. Or it goes to a single terminal. So we can verify these. And the only rule that's allowed to go to the start state is, sorry, the only rule that's allowed to go to epsilon is the start state. Therefore, when you want to generate a string like epsilon, well, you're done. S0 goes to epsilon. It only takes one step. That's a little weird. If you want to generate something like ABC, um, then this should take you seven steps. No, five steps. Two times three minus one is five. So... What are those steps? We could do S0 goes to TC. Um, TC goes to W, A, T, V, B, C. And then the W, A, T goes to V, A. Wait, is that right? Oh, that's not right. And I think I forgot to replace a rule here. Is this a little b? That should be a big b, right? Yeah, so this is wrong. This should go to b, a, b instead. There we go. Let's get it right. b, a, b, c. There we go. And then v, a goes to a. And then b goes to b. And then c goes to c. There's our five steps. One, two, three, four, five. Now, this is an inherently ambiguous language, um, and it's inherently ambiguous because we could actually generate this thing in a slightly different way, um, which instead of matching the A's and B's, which is what happened in this particular parse, we could match the B's and C's, which would happen in a different parse. Okay, we're over time. I don't want to make this too much longer, um, so I'll stop it there. There you have it, Chomsky normal form. Every rule is in one of these three ways. Every variable goes to two variables. Every variable goes to terminal. Only start states can go to the empty string. We started by producing a new start state, and then we continued by removing empty string transitions, and then we continued by removing single unit rules where a variable is replaced by one variable, and then we made new variables for terminals where we needed, and new variables for links of greater than two variables on the right-hand side where we needed. Okay, that's it. All right, good luck.